Hello, everyone, and welcome to Loop and Learn's open mic series. And today we are talking about IAPS. Uh, we're very fortunate to have Magnus Reins and Theresa Hastings with us. Uh, I call them my experts, but they don't like to be called that. But um, they've been running IAPS for quite a while and have a lot of answers and a lot of experience with the app. Uh, as usual, we do our disclaimer. The IAPS and Loop are do-it-yourself closed loop algorithms to help automate insulin delivery. They are experimental and not approved by the FDA or other regulatory authorities. This presentation and open mic night that time is provided to assist you in making your own decisions in consultation with your healthcare professionals regarding your own diabetes self-management. You take full responsibility for building and running the system and do so at your own risk. Um, we have links that you'll see in the video. I'm not expecting you to copy these down. Um, and if you want to support the community, we always suggest that you can um, go to um, Night Scout Foundation and they're all, they work very hard with developers and groups like us when we need some help. So I'm going to stop share and um, explain a little bit about what we're doing here. Um, we decided that there's a lot of questions. People are wondering whether they're interested in IAPS or what it's all about and how does it differ from Loop and all your questions. Um, and there is now a Facebook group uh, that is IAPS, and we're fortunate today to have two of the admins. It's Magnus Reins and Teresa Hastings. And along with that, we have Loop and Learn folks. We have Carol Vashon, who is running a Loop and Learn, and her husband, Phil, is the T1D, and he is now on IAPS, I think the dev version. Uh, Mike Plant is also on IAPS, and I am on AP IAPS. I've been doing this for about... Um, uh, probably two or three months, um, and and part of part of our discussion is kind of why we choose what we do, and um, is one better than the other? And I'll say up front, you will get the same management, the, you can get the same results on either Loop or IAPS or AAP, AAP, AAPS um, or Open APS. Um, it's really just a preference and a lifestyle and what works best for you and your diabetes or whoever you're managing with diabetes. Um, and my, my experience, and I'll just say it up front, is to me, it's a little more forgiving. It's a little less intensive in terms of things I have to do. And I've been doing diabetes for 58 years and less is more for me. So that's my reason. But I'm going to turn this over to Teresa and... Um, and so, oh my gosh, and Magnus, and um, thank you both for joining us today. And it's all up to you now. Thanks, Joanne. Um, yeah, I don't, Magnus, do you want to start? Maybe explain why you've picked IAPS over other um, versions sure. of DIY, and then sure. I can explain that as well. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can. We can do it that way. And and you know, if if anyone has questions, just raise your hand. Uh, that's that's what this session is for, right? Absolutely. Um, I've uh, I've had type one for as long as I can remember, uh, and I started on Omnipod Dash three years ago. Um, I got the Dash and I got the PDM and. I ended up with lows all day long <laughs> and and really had had issues um, making the pump work. So I put it aside and I went online to to try and find out how other people are making this work. Um, and I came across um, the open APS documentation and I read it. it took me a couple of days to read it. And I thought, well, this, this seems to be a good idea, but I want this on my phone. Um, so I, I kept searching and I found Android APS or AAPS. Um, and it's, it, I, I used that for about a year. It worked great, but I was missing my iPhone, right? So I tried Loop and I, I could not get Loop to work. Not for me. Um, 
high overnight, uh, low whenever Luke decided I should be low. It just, it, 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 I just didn't, didn't make it. Um, so I was very excited when I saw that some people were working on getting the algorithms from OpenAPS to work in the iOS ecosystem. And there had been for a while an app called FreeAPS X, but it was kind of outdated and it didn't support the Dexcom that I used. It didn't support the dash pods. Um, and then I found what was then called the, the BDB branch of, of, um, of FreeAPS X. It has now been renamed to IAPS and that's where we are. I've been using it for almost a year. Um, and to me, IAPS and AAPS, you know, the iPhone or the Android version, they work the same. I mean, the algorithm is the same. So people who are switching back and forth between these two have no issues at all. Um, but switching back and forth between loop and any APS based system that, that requires some, some rewiring <laughs> of the brain basically, because they, they just, they just work in, in different ways. Yep. So how about I, you, Teresa? How, how did you get, get started? Um, so way back when, when I was a baby Vedic, um, diagnosed when I was, um, 15, it was kind of a constant struggle for me to check my blood sugar, to remember to bolus, to all those things that, you know, we're kind of, it's drilled into us that we have to do these things. Right. So I've been battling that since the beginning. Um, and I, I was at a diabetes sisters meeting and um, I met Melissa Lee and she showed me her open APS system. And I was just floored. And this was back in 2016. So it was very early on in the, in the APS days. And um, Immediately, I started looking into it, really overwhelmed by OpenAPS. Um, and then a little bit later, I discovered Loop. And in September, actually September 12th, 2017, I don't know why it's so memorable, I started on Loop. And, and um, I've been doing one version of DIY looping ever since. Um, and I was always looking for something that met my need of not bolusing and not checking my blood sugar because I knew it was me fighting against myself to do those things and I wasn't going to. So to reduce the burden of diabetes on myself, I needed something that I didn't have to bolus and I didn't have to check my blood sugar. Well, a CGM kind of fixes the blood sugar issue, right? Um, especially the Dexcom because you don't have to calibrate. So um, I've, I started on a loop and every time there was a new version that made it a little easier to not bolus, I jumped on it. And that led me to free APS when it was a branch of loop. Prior to it being a main branch on the main page, it was a, a offshoot. Um, and then it was differentiated into free APS X and then that was differentiated into IAPS. So I've been on it since it was um, about, uh, I can't, I'm not sure, was it Ivan? Um, his GitHub is um, Valku. But yeah, it was um, when Ivan. he, yeah. yeah, so when Ivan um, built the original free APS, I jumped on it and started using it then. So I can't remember when that was, two years ago, three yeah, maybe? Yeah, two, two or two and a half, yeah. Um, it was pre-Ukraine because that's what caused him to stop updating anything. Um, September of 2020, maybe? That sounds about right. I'm, it was early 2021. It was, it was 2019 when he was actually, when it was out. It was when okay, I so then, out. yeah. So it was early 2020 that I started on it then. And then I just kept using the version that he had, that the last updated version. And then a friend told me about Pierre's version, which then has evolved into IAPS. Right, Magnus, Pierre's version is IAPS. Sorry, yeah, lots it's, of it's technical a, stuff. Yeah, it's, anyway. it's, I mean, it's, 
there's a surprisingly low amount of developers um, yes. making these things. So yes, it's Pierre and it's a Swedish guy called Jan. Uh, and they are the main developers and they're getting a lot of help from all of us. And uh, not all of us do coding, uh, but mm -hmm. we do stuff like this and we do translations and we do feature requests that are a little bit more, uh, let's say, uh, well-documented and well thought through. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we try to prepare everything that we can so that they can focus on, on coding. Yeah, so sorry, sorry for going off on that little tangent. I got a little caught up in the timeline and everything, but all that to say that my goal ultimately in switching over to IAPS and why I'm so happy with IAPS is that I don't have to bolus and I don't have to check my blood sugar. I can set it and forget it. And so once I got it built and set up, there's probably some tweaking I can do to make my blood sugars better. But overall, I get 80% plus time and range, um, very few excursions over 250, very few lows. And I, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm looking for good enough that I don't have to think about it. Yeah, I think I think our goals are a little bit different. So I, I'll I'll throw out mine as well. Uh, I do bolus for meals uh, because uh, I'm not that sensitive to insulin, so I need something up front. Um, but for small meals, I don't do anything. And um, IAPS has taken away the burden of lows at night, so I don't go low at night ever, but ever, and. Mm -hmm. It also brings me down to target without me having to do anything. And that was my biggest issue with loop, that I had to keep entering fake carbs to make it administer insulin. Uh, the APS algorithm doesn't work like that. It takes you back to target without interaction. Um, Ivana, I think it was Ivana that asked. Yes. Yeah, there's there's I, a question in chat. I don't know if you can see that. She's asking yeah. what yes. insulin do you <laughs> use? Um, I have used both FIASP and now I use Leumjev because insurance switched me over. Um, that's what I have used with IAPS. Okay, uh, Leumjev uh, <laughs> hurts like hell, so I can't use it. I've tried. <laughs> so I'm also I'm on, on smaller on... boluses, so yeah, that's probably yeah, it. I know. Yeah. Uh, I use I use FIASP. That that's the, the fastest one that I can get that actually works for me. Uh, we have two questions in the chat. One is, can you both share how active you are with using IAPS and how much time does it take to return to target? This is for Magnus. Yeah, okay. So um, I could I could give the, um, how much time does it take to get back to target? Well, that depends. Um, I mean, we all know pizza, right? <laughs> so um, if, I, if I'm stuck on a, a, a high, level, it, it, it can take an hour or an hour and a half to get back to target. Um, but if I'm, if, I'm not, if I'm not stuck on anything high, like really high, uh, then I'm, I'm back to target within 30 minutes of a meal. Hmm. And it keeps me like flat on target throughout the night. Hmm. Um, and when it comes to... Um, how active we are using IAPS. I, uh, I, I'm not sure I understand the question. Is it, I mean, how, how much I actually have to interact with it? Because uh, if, if that's the question, then for me, it's um, before each meal and whenever I need to correct something, you know, like if I'm going to work out and need to prepare for that, or if I'm way too high and need to do a correction bolus. But other than that, nothing. I, I don't need to constantly keep checking and interacting with that. Can you also, I can't, share, can you also share what your uh, target, what your type, what your range is? Yeah, well, I, I'm on the other uh, the other measuring uh, system. So so my <laughs> it might not say a lot. Um, my target is uh, 5.4, uh, which I guess is like, is that like a hundred? What you guys look at when you when you're looking for the perfect? Yeah, ninety eight. But yeah. when you give, so my, when you say time and range, um, what is your range that you have set? My, yeah, the time and range that I've I mean the range that I've set is the the one that is default from Dexcom, 
so it's from for me it's i guess uh, between um four point something and nine point nine or something and i mean my my time in range i mean it's ninety nine percent yeah it's not always like that, but usually it's um between ninety five and ninety eight percent and I don't bolus ever 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 and wow. my time in range is 83 with 117 um which i don't know what the conversion is but less than six magnus <laughs> yeah yeah um and i am not super active in terms of like i don't work out on a regular basis um i do like to go on hikes and such like that um and i ha i do have to do a temporary um like reduction in how much I, how much insulin I get, or I have a exercise profile that I enact, but that's about all I have to do to prevent a low. Um, there's several questions in chat asking, do you have a sense of how many people are on IAPS and how many are children? Uh, uh, I don't know that we have that data. No, we deliberately don't have that data. There's no, there's no collection of data from the app, so we don't know. Uh, the only thing we do know is how many questions we get from people on Facebook and on Discord. And it seems to me that most most IAPS users are are using it themselves. There are adults using it for themselves. There's a um, um, a handful of people using it for children, uh, but the the remote functionality is not as uh, I mean, you, remote monitoring is there through Night Scout. Um, temporary targets are there, but you cannot do remote bolus. Uh, so, depending on how, as a parent or a caregiver, how you how you manage the child's um, insulin needs, it it might not be the the one for you. And someone asked if you expect that will be available on if the caregiver will be available on IAPS in the future. Uh, a, a, like a, a separate caregiver app, like you have on Loop and and mm -hmm. and Android APS. Um, the, I mean, we know everything that we need to know to make it, but we are lacking developer resources. So it's it's about getting someone that knows enough on uh, on Swift UI to 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 build it for us. And also, I mean, it is still an open source program. So if one parent really sees the need for remote bolusing, the code is in loop already because it's existing there. So anybody that has that skill can create their own branch. And that would be fantastic because like uh, Magnus mentioned, we have only a few developers. So anybody willing to give it a shot, go for it. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I see that several people in the chat are mentioning kids, and um, if we if we know anyone, I mean, I've I've helped um, a thirteen year old and a six year old and their parents um, to get started with IAPS, um, and the I mean, they're both doing great. The, the, it, I mean, it's it's not I mean, since it's so hands off, it basically does what it does uh, on its own. So. Um, they're, I mean, the the parents of the the youngest child are they were used to uh, having the Loop caregiver app and and they missed a remote bolusing for a while until they started trusting that the algorithm will actually do what it needs to do on its own. So they're they're I mean they're doing less now. Um, There's a question about exercise. How do you handle exercise? Yeah, sure. Uh, do you want to go yeah, first, Teresa? Sure. Um, so specifically, I um, set a 75% um, save profile on mine, and that's my exercise. Um, if I need more, then I reduce it to 50. But typically, all I do is just enact that right before I'm about to do like a hike or something. And 
that seems to cover it for me. Um, I don't have to do anything um, special. And I also, like I said, I don't do a lot of like working out. Most of my stuff is going for a hike or going to Target, um, you know, which is low intensity cardio, which is what I call it. Um, and usually in those instances, I just need a little less insulin because cardio lowers your, your resistance. So that's about um, the only thing I need, um, I, I know there's differences with regarding whether or not you are weight training or things such as that, that require more insulin in cases. So for me personally, I just have a 75% across the board where it lowers both my target or raises my target, lowers my basal carb ratio and, um, ISF, but, uh, I was talking to Joanne and it, this might be the time to mention it. It's a little bit of a tangent, but not much. Um, in the profiles, which I realized from Joanne might not be intuitive to how you get to those profiles. It is the three little people. Oops, not, sorry, hit the wrong button. If you tap on the three little people, let's see if I can do it without looking. It takes you to the profile page. And if you go to more options, you can have it change whether it enacts that lower percentage on ISF and carb ratio, or if you toggle those off, it'll only adjust your basal rate. So you don't have, I don't know if you have that option in loop or not, but I noticed that that is helpful when I'm trying to test my basils. And I'm like, I think I need a little more basal right now. I'm gonna see if, you know, 10% more basal works at this time, I can enact a profile for that with only adjusting my basal rate and not my carb ratio and ISF. Yeah. Sorry, a little so tangent. Let, let, but... let's, let's talk about profiles a little, uh, a, a little bit more. Cause I mean, um, for, for exercise, I, I do the same thing. I need less insulin, uh, but I also, uh, I get very sensitive to insulin when I exercise. So in, in addition to setting um, me an 80% profile, I also set the profile to disable SMBs, right? So, so during exercise, I don't get SMBs at all. If if my blood sugar gets above target, it will uh, administer temporary basals instead of SMBs. So it's you know it's it's a little bit less aggressive. That works great for me. Um, but for people who do a kind of exercise that leads to uh, needing more insulin. You can you can still use profiles, but instead of going below 100%, you go above. And I I mean I have five or six profiles. I have one for when I'm sick. I have one for when I'm stuck at the office all day, uh, which which is like 115%. Um, I have one for when I'm driving all day, which is also for me a time when I need more insulin. So I I use profiles for these things when when I know that it's you know I. I could just wait for the algorithm to do its thing, but but I I I know that I'm going to need more or less, so I use the profiles instead. And the 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 toggles that Teresa showed are are quite. I mean, if you if you uh, read and understand each and every one of them, it's it's quite amazing how much you can you can actually do with just one profile change. So instead of going in and changing all of your settings all, all the time, you could do that with, with profiles. So it's, I mean, I, I'm the one who brought profiles into IAPS because I've, I was used to them from, from Android APS. Uh, so I had a long discussion with, with uh, Jon and Pierre about this and they thought that, well, we could, we could do this with just temporary targets, but there's so much more. And, and when, when Jon realized this, he added even more functionality than I thought uh, so, and, and, and I mean, he topped it with the disable SMB toggle, which is just great. So profiles are good. They should, I mean, we should, we should of course make videos and we should have an interactive, interactive startup training, you know, all of that should be added to the app. Um, but for now, I mean, the profiles are there, please make sure that everyone knows about them. Cause I mean, it's, I think it's, um, I think it's the, the feature I use the most. Mm -hmm. 
the calculator and profile change. You both have very impressive uh, control. And uh, one of the questions that someone asks is, how much work is it to get there? And how, what advice do you have for someone transitioning over to IAPS on how to start? Um, so um, I took my loop settings and just put them in. Now, I have to say that, you know, previously I mentioned all the you know, like stages I've gone through. Um, so the version that I put my loop settings in was more similar to loop because it was the original free APS. Um, so it's hard for me to say what exactly I adapted to as I changed versions and got to where I am now. Um, but I did not test my basils ever. I did not test my carb ratio. Um, what I did do is I used auto sins immediately because I noticed that my um, sensitivity fluctuates throughout the day. Also fluctuates depending on where my site is, whether I have it on my arm or my stomach or my leg. You know, it varies depending on where it is on my body. Um, so using auto sins is kind of a game changer for me. So I would, if I, if somebody was asking me personally and I'm helping them set up, I would tell them to toggle auto sins on immediately. There are definitely settings where you can restrict it so that it doesn't have as much of an impact until you're comfortable with it, but definitely worth using that tool immediately. Um, and Magnus, correct me if I'm wrong, because, you know, as you know, I don't read the docs, which is why I'm kind of a huge advocate for other forms of education um, besides just reading the docs. But uh, my understanding is ISF is a pretty impactful setting for all of the calculations when it comes to SMBs and UAMs. Um, knowing what your sensitivity is, is pretty helpful in terms of the impact those settings can yeah. have. Yeah, I think and, um, having having a basal rate that makes sense mm -hmm. is important. Knowing your sensitivity, your ISF is important. And knowing your carb ratio is also important. Those are the three, uh, the three things you need to learn. And I was, I guess, lucky that I, I didn't, I hadn't found loop yet when I started. So I went directly to Android APS and, and the, the community behind Android APS got so fed up with answering the same questions and people not reading the docs. So they added a learning program into the app. So if you, if you, if you start on Android APS, you're met with something called objectives and there are 10 objectives and you need to, to spend eight weeks, I'm not kidding, eight weeks to get through those objectives. Each and one of them lets you enable an, an additional feature. And each and every one of them has you answer a multiple choice question, quite hard questions actually, um, in order to, to pass that objective and move on. So it's a way of, of forcing people to understand. And, and, and the main things that people are supposed to understand is the ISF, the carb ratio, and the basils and, and how these work together. And I'll add that ISF, as long as in all of these settings, actually, which we've, we've talked about, um, or Joanne has mentioned the forgiveness of the system, you don't have to have it like fine tuned and exactly right. You have to have a general idea. So if you look at my settings versus Magnus's settings, they are very different because my sensitivity is much higher, which means my basal profile is much lower and my carb ratio is, um, my carb number is much higher than his. So our numbers are very different. So we couldn't just you know swap and be successful. But if you had a general idea, I'd say um, you know within, I'm just pulling a number out of my hat, but roughly 0.2 plus or minus for each basal rate. Um, your carb ratio is within five-ish grams of where it should be, plus or minus five. 
and your um, sensitivity is, I mean, that's a hard number to say. I would say within 10% of what it actually is, you'll see the best results. Yep. But the system is very forgiving in that I don't enter any carbs. And I, I was talking to Joanne and my blood sugars will peak and then go right back down. I was yep. actually looking for an example. And this morning's a great one. So this morning, as you can see, no carbs entered, but it peaked and now I'm back to, what am I at? 84 and steady. What, what did you and eat? And I didn't enter. What did you eat? Uh, I had a Cinnabon. <laughs> so I'm not low carb. I eat all the carbs. It had all the cream cheese icing on top of it. It was delicious. But my highest peak, um, I saw that is it's at the line above it is 225. So I my highest peak was just below 225. Um, hey, Teresa. And, yes. With with um, having those ups and downs like that, does that cause you to it's feel like, like less movie. than Maybe. stellar? Or nope. are you just used to that and ride it out or what? Um, I don't feel um, bad, I guess is the best, correct, best word to use. Um, I don't feel bad unless I get over 300. Mm -hmm. So the ups and downs, um, I don't feel any negative way unless I'm going too low because going from say 250 to 100 in, let me see what how, what the time frame was where I went. So I went from 225 to 180 in an hour, which is not too rapid. No. But then by I was at 180 at say 10:45, and by one o'clock I was at 90. So it's it looks steep. And it, you know, I say it's like this, but it's really more gradual of a downward slope, but it still is not steep enough that I'm feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm tanking. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating. It comes down and then it levels. You keep, you, you, when you see the down, you go, mm -hmm. uh oh, I'm going into a low and it does, it just seems to flatten. Mm -hmm. it gets towards, what, what is your target? Because there's only one number for target in IAPS. Yes. My target is, let me find it, um, 75 across the board. All right. I'm going to interrupt for a second. This is Carol. I'm hoping that, so we're about 35 minutes in, and I know we want to end at an hour. We can maybe quiz um, Magnus and Teresa for another few minutes about their individual settings. But if we could talk a little bit more generally about the app, uh, switch to that discussion and how people should think about transitioning, whether they're coming from loop or free APS, you know, a, a derivative of loop or coming from AAPS. Um, so we, let's, we can finish up this and then we could just transition so we can make some good use of the time. Yeah, sure. Uh, we could start with, with AAPS. Is, I mean, is there anyone on this call that is considering moving from AAPS to IAPS? Because if not, we don't even need to discuss that. All the bugs and loopers. Bueller? <laughs> I mean, considering it's a loop and learn Q and A, yeah. it makes sense that there wouldn't be a lot of, but it is yeah. possible that yeah. somebody on here is anyway, from AAPS. I, mean, I, I can do that in less than a minute. Because I think Lori I has her hand raised. Yeah, cool. Uh, did you are you on AAPS? Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Okay. Oh, cool. Well, Sorry. Yeah, I, I'll just in 30 seconds. I mean, uh, the settings are basically the same. The algorithm is the same. It's the, it's the exact same code. So you will recognize, I mean, Android APS has a user interface that was not made for, for people. So, it, I mean, it's terrible. There's a lot of tabs and settings and buttons and things are hidden all over the place, but, but you'll find the same settings. So, so if you come from Android APS and you go to IAPS, you will find a place to put all of your settings and it will work basically the same. You will miss a couple of automation features, um, but other than that, you're good to go. So there's, I mean, there's, there's no issue 
uh, switching back and forth between those two. Um, when it comes to loop, um, I mean, I've seen I've seen people successfully bring their settings into IAPS. I mean, settings like uh, Basel and ISF and CR, and um, they start on IAPS and they go um, for a couple of days. They're very happy that IAPS doesn't give them lows, right? Uh, but they complain about getting stuck on highs. That's the, that's what usually happens. So this is the big difference in the algorithms because um, any APS-based system will stop giving you insulin if you don't need it. It will stop. And when you build up the negative uh, basal, it won't just give you that in order to get back to zero. It will not give you anything unless you actually need it. So the getting rid of lows is very normal. And, and I mean, everyone is happy with, with getting rid of the lows, but then there's the highs. And um, it doesn't help to enter carbs. I mean, uh, an, I, an APS system will not give you insulin based on carbs alone. It needs the settings to be right. It needs the um, the carb ratio to be right. It needs the ISF to be right or right-ish because you know there's dynamic settings to kind of try to to find the right um, um, middle path. But still, it needs these settings to be approximately right. And then you need to uh, change a couple of settings that are by default very um, let's say restricted or conservative because we we don't want people building the app, starting it, and getting too much insulin. So there's mm -hmm. a, a handful of settings that are deliberately set very, very restrictive. Um, the maximum IOB, maximum insulin on board, is by default zero. So it will not give you anything until you change that setting. Um, the, um, the calculator, the bolus calculator, is set to give you 80%, I think, by default of, of what it thinks that you need. That should be, I mean, it should be changed to 100 for every, almost everyone. Um, and then there's the settings for SMB and unattended meals. Um, and they are set in, it's, it's quite weird. I mean, it's, it's called um, SMB basal minutes and unattended meal basal minutes. And it, it seems like it's borrowing something from your basal rate, but it's, it's actually not borrowing anything. It's just using your basal rate as a way to calculate how much insulin it's supposed to give you. So uh, these settings are also set very low. They're set to 30 minutes, I think. Most adults end up around 90, some above, some below, I know. Uh, yeah, uh, but you're very sensitive to insulin. So, um, but until you change these settings, you will you will find that 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 um, IAPS is preventing lows, but it's it's giving you highs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and coming from Loop, I will say that um, it's the biggest change, which was easy for me because, like I said, my my goals for switching over to the system were to not bolus and not think about diabetes. Um, but the, the biggest change coming from loop is kind of like when you have a um, person coming from Medtronic closed loop to loop, right? You kind of have to be like, you have to change your way of thinking. You have to stop calibrating. You have to stop you know, doing all of these things, you have to stop entering ghost carbs, or you have to change your, change your idea of how long insulin is active in your system, because loop accounts for all of those factors more accurately. So in the same way, you have to change your mindset when you switch from loop to IAPS. And that in IAPS, the system is more forgiving. And if you if your target is a flat line you have to achieve it one you're probably not going to achieve it 
unless you are, you know, low to no carb. Um, but that's with any system. With, um, if you're trying to reduce your peaks, just entering carbs is not going to have the same effect because um, open APS, or not open APS, but um, IAPS doesn't start giving you insulin until your, in, your blood sugar starts to rise. So exactly. it is by safety, not going to give you insulin until it starts to see you go up. Yeah, and, and this is a huge, I mean, it's, it's a huge difference from, from loop, which is very, very carb centric. If, if you enter carbs, it will give insulin, right? But IAPS will not. And I mean, this is my 24 hour curve. Mm -hmm. it's, it's mostly within range, it's mostly flat. And the way, the way I, I get that to work is, is by pre-bolusing for large meals. And apart from that, I do nothing. Yeah. Mine is not as pretty. <laughs> no, but then again, I mean, you eat whatever you want. I, I kind of restrict I, myself. Yeah, I eat whatever I want and I don't bolus. So mm. that is pretty to me for the fact that I haven't had to do very much at all. Just, just to show a different graph. Also on IAPS, this is my 24 hour graph. No low carb, I eat all the carbs. And this spike here is a pot fail at work. Yeah, <laughs> and you see, I can write down. Yeah, the I I will say that this, not this one. This was so kind of fun. Just but just, just one, for for reference. <laughs> yeah, this one was my pod died, and I didn't have one on me, so it took me like thirty minutes to get a new pod. So that's it, you know, correcting. So that wasn't actually food, but yeah. But I think I think the the. Uh, the most important thing here is to, I mean, if, if you're considering doing the switch, first of all, think, why? Why do you want to switch? I mean, if, if, it, if it's working for you, don't. If loop is working, don't, don't switch it out with anything. Yes. Uh, but if you, if you have the, I mean, the um, recurring lows, uh, the, uh, the issue of not getting back to target, the issues of uh, having to enter fake carbs all the time. And, and those are things that the APS algorithm just, I mean, it, for most people, it, it handles that in a better way, in a more forgiving way. So, uh, so those are good reasons to switch over, but you need to, to take the time to uh, read and, and understand the settings and be prepared that the first couple of weeks is, is gonna be, um, it's gonna be tough. The first couple of weeks is, is usually tough, you, you know, tweaking the settings and getting it right. In, in the same way, especially if you have um, auto sends turned on, and um, you've got some of the safety things reduced so that it's not so restrictive, you'll find that the less you do, the better it performs. And that's kind of counterintuitive to the way that loop works, where it's like, give me more info, give me all the info. I need the, the most info in order to perform optimally. And in IAPS, Definitely entering your carbs helps, but reducing the restrictions with safety in mind. I'm not saying, you know, go in there and take all the restrictions off and, you know, let it have at it, but reducing the restrictions that are by default on the system is probably where you'll see more impact on the effectiveness and less where your settings are. So you don't necessarily need to change your settings in that you don't need to change your basal or your any of those things. You mostly probably just need to change the restrictions on the system. Yep, I agree. Which is very different from loop because loop is not a learning system. IAPS is a learning system, especially when, well, I guess only when AutoSense is turned on but it is a, very much a learning system and that it adapts to your sensitivity with autosins so that it's more effective. So, so just, a, just a question or like a guided question. Can you guys go into the uh, carb entry thing because IAPS has fats and proteins in there? 
and can maybe go a bit into the differences of like loop and uh, IFS when it comes to meal entry and how it reacts to meals and fats and protein. Yeah, um, uh, Teresa, do you do meal entries at all? No, I don't do meal entries <laughs> at all. Um, I would say the fat protein part of IAPS is kind of like unnecessary. Like we don't need, I mean. Well, it, maybe... it, it, it depends, you know, because um, for, um, I mean, you're right that IAPS doesn't give you insulin until it sees that you're rising, right? Mm -hmm. But the amount that it gives, I mean, the, the carbs that you enter are part of the equation. Mm -hmm. It doesn't give you, I mean, I've, I've tested myself just to, to, to prove a point. I entered, I think, like 5,000 carbs and, and, and nothing happened. I, I waited for 10 loop cycles and my BG was flat, so nothing actually happened. Um, but, but whenever your, your glucose actually rises, the algorithm will take any entered carbs into account. And if you've had a lot of food, um, it will react quicker and you will avoid the spikes, right? So that's why the calculator is there. That's why there's a, a fat and protein uh, option. It's based off a common formula. I don't remember the name. I guess, Dan, you probably do. Um, not... Yeah, um, exactly, thanks. And it, I mean, it, what it does is that it, it, it converts fat and protein into future carbs and it enters them into, um, into your graph, but it will not be taken into account until it's actually absorbed, right? So, so it's not like loop where when you give future carbs, it, you will get insulin. Uh, in IAPS, even if you do enter fat and protein, which converts to future carbs, you will not get insulin until you need it. Which is great mm -hmm. for kids, by the way. I mean, small children mm -hmm. who are not, I mean, it's impossible to know if they will finish your meal or not. So, I mean, entering carbs up front for kids is for many people a, a huge headache. So, uh, so what I advise most parents with kids to do is to, to do a bolus, a pre-bolus for half of the meal and let the algorithm deal with the rest. I have a quick question, if I may, real short. So it sounds like all of you are using like either FIOSP or one of the faster acting insulins. Are there, oh, okay, Joanne's not. Okay. Because that was my concern is if it's going to wait and give you insulin as your blood sugar rises, regardless of what you put in for carbs, then it sounds like the faster acting is a better option. Yeah, the faster acting is a better option, definitely. Uh, but there are several people using uh, uh, Humalog, Novolog, uh, yeah, th those kind of insulins. And I mean, the only the only difference is that they, if you use those those kinds of insulin, you should bolus before you eat. You don't have to do the whole thing. I mean, you should you should you should use the calculator and bolus something before you eat, and then let the algorithm do the rest. So you bolus without carbs or. Yeah, I mean, you can add the carbs if you want, but it's 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 not as crucial as it is for loop. I mean, okay. like like the, like Teresa is is showing, she doesn't add carbs at all. I I um I can't use loop drive burns also. <laughs> I guess, oh, <laughs> it's painful. Um, I tried Fiasp, and and within a few days, it acts like I'm shooting water, so I can't use Fiasp either. So I'm back on Novolog. Um, I wish I could go to something a little faster, but I don't think it's a significant issue. I do pre bolus, um, and I throw in an estimate of ten carbs, ten grams of carb. Figure that covers an initial and gets it started. So it's some amount. But it doesn't have to be an exact amount. Yeah, but and I, and I think I think Joanne, we do those things a bit differently because when you enter a, a you enter you use the calculator, right? And you enter ten grams to get some free bolus. I use the bolus button and I give myself one or two units because I know that it, it doesn't really care about about carbs until there's a like a huge rise and it's going to do its calculations. So so if you pre bolus. With the calculator and and add fake carbs. I mean, you, you you could just add. You could just give yourself one or two units or whatever is enough for you. Well, I haven't thought of doing that. Okay, great. That's great. Yeah. But you could you can also set your um, 
suggested bolus amount. I can't remember what the settings yep. called. Sorry. We talked about it earlier. So if yep. you don't want to give a hundred percent of a of the amount of bolus up front, um recommended bolus sorry. percentage. Yes, the recommended bolus percentage. Mine is set to 70. So if I ever enter carbs, I at most want 70% of that amount because I know the loop is or the IAPS is going to handle the rest of it. So there are rare occasions where I will enter the carbs. And that's typically things like um, a smoothie, which is zero fat, all fruit, straight sugar. Um, and I know it's gonna spike me really high. So I will enter those carbs, but that's only if I'm not eating anything else, there's no other fat or no, like there's no ice cream mixed in or anything like that. Um, so there are cases where you probably just want a little bit of insulin. And if you're not wanting to overthink it and you just wanna be like, okay, I'm gonna enter my carbs and you take, I, I only wanna take 50% of that, then set your bol recommended bolus percentage to 50%. And then it's only going to suggest 50%. You just say, yes, I want to give that bolus when you enter your carbs, and then it'll handle the rest. As always, we are getting, uh, we're short on time. And uh, there's a couple of things that I think we need to say. And I see some, some questions as well. Um, I mean, common, common issues when, when transferring from loop to IIPS. Uh, there's a question here from Jim, I think. Uh, when starting, I assume we can leave the loop app on our phone, or should we delete it? Now, um, I think the best advice is delete it because um, the Loop app and IAPS will be competing uh, on getting the CGM readings. So we've had some users who can have Loop and IAPS on the same phone and it's working great, but we've also had a lot of users who are having issues because Loop is getting the data from the CGM instead of, of, of IAPS. So um, use, use a different phone if you have one uh, or just delete the loop app if you're good to go. That's the best advice. Just um, to add to that, if, if you delete the CGM and if you delete Apple Health read and, read and uh, write writes for loop, it's basically an empty app on your phone. You can leave it on the phone. I've, yeah. I've, actually, I've actually DM'd with John yeah. about this and he and, basically and, told me that. Yeah. And you're right about that then, but that is yeah. for most people, it's too much to, to actually get right. Yeah. So deleting the app is, is probably easier for most people. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, disconnecting the CTM and disconnecting it from, from Apple Health will do the trick. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is, I mean, some, some people have started um, with deploying the IPS app on their phone, connecting it to the CTM, and then uh, adding uh, a virtual pump while still on loop and then trying to compare the results. And that is a waste of time because the results will be different. The algorithms are different. So that's a waste of time. Uh, the, um, I know there's a recommendation in the documents that says uh, start with, a, with a, a virtual pump and that's for users who have never been on DYI looping of any sort before. So, of course, if you if you want to try, then go ahead. But but please don't don't waste your time comparing results because it's 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 not comparable. It's good for just like playing around with the app, just to kind of like figure out the interface and figure out where all the buttons are. Um, yeah. But to to actually figure out your settings and stuff, yeah, I wouldn't say it's very useful. And there's really useful agree. information that you can get by touching the different um, buttons for the settings too. It will tell you about the yes. settings that, that is useful. Yes, to yeah. learn so the app someone, definitely. Yeah. And yeah, some, of those, some of those, some of those, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Ellen. No, I was just going to say one. some of those explanations on the app can be kind of overwhelming. So if you ever have a question about what it says, then just ask, take a screenshot and ask in the IAPS group. How important are the dynamic settings? Dynamic ISF, dynamic CR, dynamic sigmoid? For the kind of success yeah. that the two of you have. Excellent. Uh, dynamic features are very important. Dynamic mm -hmm. ISF and CR are very important. The sigmoid thing, uh, I'd, I'd start without it because mm -hmm. it, it, it tends to it tends to 
be more aggressive. So I'd start with out sigmoid function. It's just a different way of, well, I, I, we don't have time to go into that, but um, dynamic settings, yes. Sigmoid, start with it turned off. And um, for reference, my dynamic settings adjustment factor, I have set to one. The default is 0.5. Um, because I want it to be more aggressive. So slowly build it up to you know a higher number, but I, because I don't bolus and that's my goal, um, I have it set to one. So it fully enacts what it thinks it needs. And I see a better result as a, because of that. But one is an incredibly aggressive, setting. So if you're going to increase the adjustment factor under dynamic settings, do it like 0 0.1, 0 0.05 at a time, because it has a big impact on the effectiveness of the system and how much insulin it's going to give you. And, um, I'm hoping, I shouldn't do this too in public. I'm hoping we can talk you into doing this with us again, because I think it's been tremendously successful. And I think a lot of people have had a chance to hear your voices and ask questions or follow along. So it's been amazing. And I want to clarify, when I say learning system, I don't mean learning system in the traditional way. I meant it adapts. So it learns in that it takes your previous blood sugars into account when it is changing your future settings yeah and then you there's can just no turn AI. that off <laughs> there, yes. there's no ai yes. <laughs> sorry i was i need to clarify that because it is not learning in that it's it is just making adaptations to your settings and then you can turn those adaptations off and it'll go directly back to what you have your settings set at so i just wanted to clarify and on that, that note <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess we'll thank you very much for, for joining us and for sharing your knowledge about IAPS. And I hope that we get to do this all again because it was tremendously successful. We had almost 40 people join us today. Wow. Cool. I know. Wow, that's you awesome. know how popular you are? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, guys. Thanks for joining. Bye. Thank you. Bye.